let's take a look at what are complex numbers. I've drawn a picture here that you might want to pause the video for and jot down in your notes if it does not look familiar. But you should have seen this before at some point during your math career. These are our real number system. It's made up of rational numbers and irrational numbers, numbers that can be written as a fraction and numbers that cannot. And then of course we have our smaller categories right here. Again, if this does not look familiar, stop the video and pause and write that down. But it should look familiar. And I'm only showing you this because this is where complex numbers do not belong. They're a separate category right over here. And Rene Descartes, about 400 years ago, an old French man decided that we should have an imaginary number called I. So he invented this number and we use it for things that would normally not be possible for us to continue to solve. So the definition of I is the square root of negative one. Up until this point, we have not been able to simplify. Like if we were asked to find the square root of negative 25, we would just simply say it's not possible. But now we can simplify it using complex numbers. So using I, we'd be able to take it further. And I squared is equal to negative one. These two are the most two important definitions of I that we're gonna use. But on the next slide, I'm gonna show you where this all falls together. So let's see. I want to show you the pattern that the powers of i follow. So starting with i to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power we learn is just equal to 1. So including i would also equal 1. i to the first power is just equal to itself. i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which would come out as just plain negative 1 because the square roots would cancel. And then you have i cubed is equal to three square root of negative ones multiplied together, and that would be equal to negative i, because it would be negative square root of negative one, which is negative i. i to the fourth power would be if you have four of these multiplied together, and they would all clean up to just equal one. And the pattern starts to repeat itself. So notice we have one i, negative one, negative i, and it starts over. So now we have one, i to the fifth power, if we were to work it all out, would be equal to i again. i to the sixth power, again, if we wrote it all the way out and simplified, we could see that it would equal negative one. i to the seventh would be negative i, and so on. And so what we notice when we're working with our imaginary number is that there are four values that continue to repeat. So if we focus on these four main values, any other power of i would be equal to one of these four. So see, it repeats. i, negative one, negative i, and one are the only four that we need. Everything else will be equivalent. And so let's look at some examples of what if they gave you a higher power and they wanted you to simplify it. So if we are simplifying, we are going to divide our exponent by four, since we only need four to find what it's equal to, and then find the remainder, and the remainder will tell us what power of i is most simplified. All right, so if we have i to the 70th power, you take that exponent and divide it by four. So four goes into seven one time. One times four is four. You subtract, and you have 30. Four will divide into 30 seven times, 7 times 4 is 28. You subtract, and you have a remainder of 2. That is the key right there. So i to the 70th power would be equal to i squared. That's my new exponent, is my remainder. And i squared is equal to negative 1. So we would say i to the 70th power simplifies all the way to negative 1. Let's look at another one. Let me change my color so it doesn't all blend together. i to the 25th power. So take 25 and divide it by 4. So 4 will divide evenly into 25. Well, not evenly, but it'll go 6 times is what I'm thinking about. So 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. And we have 1 left over. So our remainder is 1. And so that is now our new power of i. And i to the first power is just i. 
So we would say i to the 25th power is equivalent and simplified to equal just i. Let's do another one. If we have the 82nd power of i, again, it's going to equal something smaller. So you, whoops, nine to the four. So the 82nd power, we divide by four. So four divides into eight two times. Two times four is eight. We subtract, and we have a remainder of two. So this would be equivalent, i to the 82nd power is equivalent to i squared, which is equivalent to negative 1. So we have simplified it. And we have one more to look at for these examples. The 105th power. So let's take 105 divided by 4. So 4 divides into 10 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. We can subtract and we get 25. So 4 will go into 25 six times. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. And your main focus, notice I'm not worried about that 26. I want the remainder, which would be 1. So i to the 105th power, the remainder was 1 when I divided by 4. So therefore, that's my new exponent on my i, which is just i. We don't have to write that 1. All right, so let's take a look at what else we're going to see with complex numbers. That was one type of question. So what if there are radicals that we have normally just said are not possible? Now they are. So for instance, and we want to simplify and remember to remove the i first. So when you see a negative underneath, we're going to make sure to remove it before we do any more simplifying. And that'll, I'll show you where that falls into place. So on number one, we have the square root of negative 81. First, you want to remove the square root of negative 1. So you want to treat it like the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. So see, that's where your i can come out, and then you can simplify the square root of 81. So the square root of 81 is 9, because 81 comes from 9 times 9. And the square root of negative 1 is i. And we write it in that order, 9i, the same way we write 9x. You put the 9 first as a coefficient. The square root of negative 121x to the fifth. So we want to take out the i, so take out this negative first. We don't have to always write it this way. That's kind of the long way to write it. But when you see that, take out the i. And then let's work on the rest of it. So we have 121x to the fifth left over. 121 comes from 11 times 11. And there are five x's in here. So I can take out 11. And there are two pairs of x's, so I'm going to take out 11x squared, i is out there, and I would have the square root of x left over. So that would be fully simplified. For number 3, I need to take out, again, this negative would be an i out front, and then I have the square root of 25 over 121, which would come out evenly. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 121 is a nice even 11. And then write your i behind the number. So that's a coefficient. Let's look at number four, the cube root of a negative. Now the cube root of a negative is possible. The square root of a negative was not possible until we have now talked about complex numbers. But the cube root of a negative would work out. So we could say negative 64 comes from negative 4 times 16, and 16 was made up of two negative fours. So it's possible, if this one works out to be even, that negative four times negative four times negative four did give me negative 64. So the cube root of negative 64 is negative four. I don't need an i for that one. And there are four x's, and I need a group of three because I'm taking the cube root right now. So I can take out 1x because I have a group of 3. And then I have the cube root of this x left over. So now that would be simplified. But I did not need i for that problem. On number 5, this is important. You do not want to multiply these two together first and get the square root of 100 and say that that's equal to 10. Remember to remove your i's first. They are given in the problem, and you need to keep them in the problem. 
until they clean up otherwise. So we have i square root 5 times i square root 20. So take those out as an i. Don't just get rid of them by multiplying. Then we can multiply this together and we get i squared times the square root of 100. So remember i squared had that value on our first board and on our second board. i squared is equal to negative 1 and the square root of 100 is equal to 10. And so our final simplified answer would be negative 10. But notice you wouldn't have that negative 10 if you had taken them away by multiplying. And that's important. It is our answer. Let's look at one more on this board. We have <clears throat> negative 3 times the square root of negative 5 squared. Again, take out your i first to make sure you get the right simplified solution. So take out i from right here and leave the square root of 5. It's all still squared. And squared means to multiply something by itself. So I'm going to write it again. In the interest of space, I just erased my square and wrote it again. So now negative 3i times negative 3i, those are out front, so they multiply together to be 9i squared. And then you have the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Those are both underneath the radical. So we can multiply those together to be the square root of 25. So 9i squared would become 9 times negative 1. And the square root of 25 comes out evenly as 5. And so I end up with negative 45 for my solution. Okay, just one more board. <clears throat> All right, let's look at these examples. A complex number is an expression of the form a plus bi, which means it has a real part a and a complex part bi. And so these are more like polynomial expressions, but they work very much like what we're used to them working as, and then we need to simplify our i's as we can. So number one, we have 8i times 3i. That will give us 24i squared but now we know that i squared is equivalent to negative 1. So our simplified solution to this one would simply be negative 24. On number 2, we have negative i cubed. So we can rewrite that without the parentheses. It wouldn't change a whole lot. And then i squared cubed, you multiply your exponents. So you get i to the 6th power. And then you multiply those together. So you get negative i to the 9th power power. That's a negative. But remember i to the ninth power on our second board we could reduce because 9 is divisible by 4. It can be simplified into one of our four powers. So 4 goes into 9 two times. Bring down the 8 and we have one remainder. 1 is our remainder. And so we rewrite this one as negative i to the first power. But you don't have to write the 1. So that would be simplified. You don't want to leave the ninth power because it can be simplified down to the first power. For 2i times 3i squared, we can first multiply what's in parentheses. So you get 6i squared squared. Now we can take this one and go two different ways with this. 6i squared is equivalent to negative 6 because i squared is negative 1. And if you square negative 6, you get 36. Or you might think of it as 6i squared times itself and separate it like that. But then each of those is still equal to negative 6, which would still give you 36. So either way you think of that one, of course, one. now that you see both, one definitely looks shorter than the other. But they should give you the same answer. On number 4, these are combining like terms. Your a values can go together. So the ones that don't have i are like terms, and the, one that, the ones that do have i are also like terms. So 7 plus negative 4 is 3. 5i plus negative 6i would be negative i or minus i. So that's in our form a plus bi. We just leave it like that. We don't have to do anything else. For number 5, we just have to distribute the 4 like we normally would. So negative 8 plus 28i, bring down the 4 plus 6i, and we can combine like terms. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and 6i plus 28i would be 
34i for that one. So that is simplified, and that one is simplified, and we'll circle 36 over here. All right, so number six is a binomial times a binomial. So we need to FOIL this one and see what else we can do. So first times first would be 8. Outside times outside is negative 10i. Inside times inside would give us 12i. And last times last would give us negative 15i squared. So you put the two in the middle together because they both have i, so they go together. So negative 10 plus 12 is 2i. And then negative 15i squared, we can replace i squared with negative 1, which turns this into a positive 15. So 8 plus 15 would be 23 plus the 2i we got from our two middle terms. So those are some good examples of what you might see with complex numbers. You could see polynomials like this board. You could see radicals that you before now could not reduce, but now you can using i. And you can see the ones where you just have to change the exponent to make it more simplified.